coming to you, undead from the crypt. This is Adelaide Horror Podcast with Zombie Joe. <laughs> Adelaide Horror Podcast acknowledges the Ghana people, the traditional custodians of the Adelaide Plains. These are the lands we live, learn and work on. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Hi and welcome to the Adelaide Horror Podcast. This is your host Zombie Joe. Tonight's episode is number 29 and I'm celebrating NADOC uh, at the start of July. So this episode is going to be a Indigenous themed episode. So I'm going to be looking at Firebite uh, from 2021 and I'm going to also give a horrible mention uh, to Cargo from 2017. Both of these films are South Australian, which is really, really uh, good. Why well, I got excited when both of these um film and tv show came out in their prospective time slots uh and and so recently visiting um firebite on amc uh which is that's it's so it's streaming under prime video and then if you add extra you can get the amc channel so i did that and and managed to get this tv show man i was i was really impressed uh with this tv show the fact that you know it just one it was like this it's described as a neo western but it's it's still this it's still a horror because it's got the the vampire kind of concept on it but it's not terrifying you're not going to sleep with the with the lights on but it's uh it's it's creepy enough and the concept is really good and i really dug that and hence hence why it's getting um talked about tonight so it's directed by Warwick Thornton, and you'd know him from Sam- Samson and Delia, Sweet Country, Mystery Road, the TV show, and he was also the director of photography on the movie The Sapphires, which had another, which is another indigenous um, TV uh, movie, uh, and set on real events uh, about the um, the all girl group from the sixties that travels to Vietnam uh, to entertain the troops um, over there. So. <clears throat> Another great, another great movie to, to check out. So, and he and Warwick was also the writer for this as well. The location was in SA, uh, filmed in Cooper Pedy. Uh, so, the indigenous word for Cooper Pedy is Cooper Pitti. So, K U P A P I T I, and it actually translates to Whitefellas Hole. <laughs> So, which is, which is, uh, the reason for that is, is all the holes that they dug in 1915 when they started the township, uh, was digging for Opal. It's an Opal mining town. I've never been there. I think my mum went there. I, I can't remember, but, uh, I've always wanted to go. Um, yeah, it's just a unique premise that the, cause the surfaces are hot, everything is underground, the houses, church, mining pubs the work it's all underground so when when the tv show came out and it was like vampires living underground uh it's perfect really because they could move around uh even during daylight if necessary and a few times during the the tv episodes you do see this Uh, they just have to be careful of the sunlight coming through the different mine shafts um I thought that concept was really great. Um, And so, yeah, that's, you know, that's a bit of info there. Um, We couldn't get any gross information about the uh, earnings of the the, uh, TV show because it's straight to uh, streaming services and IMDb. I couldn't get any info about how much it was made for and stuff like that. So, unfortunately, I can't supply that. IMDb gave it a bullshit score of five out of ten, so they can get fucked. It's it's nine out of ten for me. Uh, it's a really good TV show, so don't get pulled off by that absolute ridiculous score. Um, uh, the runtime it's so it's eight episodes. The next season's coming out. It's eight episodes, so it's forty minutes each. So you're looking at about five hours if you want to like really pump it out one afternoon. And let's face it, the weather's been that bad. <laughs> it's, uh, or if um if you do have COVID and you have to stay home uh, and you want a good 
vampire show to binge one afternoon. Uh, this is definitely binge worthy. You will, I've caught myself at least two or three episodes one after another because the the episodes they don't leave on these dramatic massive cling cliffhangers but they're just enough for you to go oh i've got to watch the first 10 minutes to see how it plays out for the next episode and it keeps doing it and you keep getting sucked in going i'm just going to watch 10 minutes and then the next minute you know you're, you're fully invested and you go hey you know uh, I'll, I'll watch the next episode or, or do I call in sick? <laughs> like, <laughs> am I going to pull a sickie at work to just keep watching this? The thought has crossed my mind a few times. Uh, but I didn't. I was a good boy. I went to work. And uh, so, yeah, definitely, definitely binge-worthy uh, episodes on, on this one here. It's rated M15+. plus. I mean, it's not, it's not, like I said, over the top. It's not massively gory. And it's not terrifying either, um, but it's creepy enough. It's got the good uh, score. The you know the special effects for the vampires are pretty decent, um, and yeah. So I mean, yeah, you could easily show you know a fifteen year old with a parent. This this isn't an issue. It's not nightmare fuel at all. Um, and so I put it down as a first time horror. Absolutely, um, yeah. You could. You could watch this with a partner uh, if they're not overly keen on horror films, but, um, you know, it's not gory. It's, you know, it, you don't really see a lot of the stuff either. It's, it's A lot of it's kind of off, off, off set, like off camera, sorry. And so it's, it's yeah, it's not like, you know, Dust Till Dawn with the Mexican band with the severed limb, like, guitar. It's nothing like that. It's, it should be, like, that, that would, that would have been, that would have been absolutely sick. But, like, you know, it, it's not, but that's good. So the cast is a, it's a really good cast. And uh, so you got Tyson, he's the, one of the main characters. He's played by Rob Collins. You'd know him from Mystery Road and Extraction, the movie with um, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, Shanika is the other um, main character as well. She's the teenage um, Indigenous actor really coming up in the ranks for acting. Um, he he plays, uh, her name is uh, Chantel uh, Cohen. And you'd know her from TV shows of Total Control, the zombie war, uh, the zombie movie um, Werewood, um, and Waterproof Fence. And you'd know her from Cargo as well. So there's your tie-in uh, kind of thing. Uh, also, Auntie uh, Maria is played by Tessa Rose, and you'd know her from Glitch, Top End Wedding, and Fires. Um, Kitty, uh, who's his actual name, and I've got a, it's Nagari Pig, Pigram. So N-G-A-I-R-E and then P-I-G-R-A-M. So I do apologize in advance with some of the misinterpretations of this. I'll just do the best I can with that. Uh, so you know from Mystery Road. She was a really great actress as well. Um, and I really liked her ca character in this. It's the, the to and fro between her and Tyson. It's the, the love interest, but there's a tension there. Um, and she really cares about him, but he's kind of this knockabout um, kind of larrikin character uh, that she's trying to, not control, but you, you can tell she's trying to help him control himself is was what I'm trying to get at. And uh, creates massive amounts of tension, but you can tell that there's definite love between the both and they're both um, the love interest. You got Froggy, who's played by uh, Thribul Netty, so T H I B U L, and then N E T T L E. Uh, you'd know him uh, from Storm Boy um, as well, so the current one, not the original Storm Boy. Uh, you have Black Elvis, played by Samuel Pilot. Uh, there's no credits for him. I looked everywhere, seen his other films. He's just in this one. This was his first movie, obviously. Uh, so that's guy. So Black Elvis, the reason why they call him Black Elvis, he's got the cowboy hat and stuff, and, you know, he's a fan of Elvis. <laughs> and he runs the kind of pawn shop in the local community that people go to and pawn and swap their items. So uh, that was him. Uh, now, 
Jiling Biri is is the name of the character. He's the elder um, blood hunter. He's played by Kilton Pell. Uh, Kilton uh, is known for Pine Gap, the TV show, Red Dog, the movie, and Red Fern Now, which is another uh, indigenous drama set in Sydney uh, that I haven't seen, but it's got a lot of awards. It's a very um, popular Australian indigenous drama, which is which is really good. So he plays like he's he's really um, uh, the cosmetics. What they've done to like, he's really grown his beard out. It's quite white. He's very dishevelled. He's the guy you actually see on the poster, uh, dragging one of the vampires away. And when this was the first still shot that I saw, um, uh, when researching the show and finding out about the show when it was coming out, it really got me interested. I thought, wow, okay, this is. An Aboriginal elder, he's a hunter, he's killing vampires, like, this is, this is gonna be something else, and, uh, so, yeah, and it, and it didn't disappoint, his character is really good, uh, he's got this, um, I don't know the name of the weapon, but, oh, man, it's, phew, it's, it's one of the indigenous, th it's not a boomerang, it's kind of shaped like a boomerang, but one side's more longer than the other, and the way he just chucks it, and he, caves in the head of some vampire running towards him and mate what a kill and a half that was and just seeing that weapon in action to see because you see him in museums and things but you haven't seen it in action so you don't know the damage that this thing can do and then actually having the the ability for you know uh, an indigenous director to say okay let's put these weapons in these movies and show you know uh what these weapons can do on on a on a battlefield and i was like shit you do not want to get cleaned up by that that just looked brutal it just shaved all this off just like fucking knife through butter like it and that's a human skull and it just, just like no no effort involved at all so it was quite an impressive weapon i don't know the name of it unfortunately but yeah wow just seeing in action was brutal. So that's one of his main um, weapons that he uses. And there's other weapons through this show that you see that they've customized. And, um, you know, one's like a machine gun, wooden stake like gun. It looks sick, man. It looks really good, like a really high powered nail gun. And they've turned it into a machine gun, like with this long magazine with just wooden stakes in it. I just thought it was just brilliant. Like all the out of this. Thinking outside the square is why I, I really thought this um, show was quite impressive because it did, um, and, and it shows. The uh, oh yeah, and then you've got Elona who runs the pub now. You she is Yale Stone, so Y A E L. I don't know if I pronounce that. You would definitely know her from Orange Is the New Black. She's the Australian actress who played the New York. Uh, Marinello, the woman, the girl that kept thinking she was pregnant, <laughs> like she was a bit loose, like she was a bit of a nut job. So when I first got into Orange is a New Black, I really got into it and was like binging the show, something fierce. And then um, I saw interviews and they interviewed her and she started talking. She had this Aussie accent and I'd, I'd tell you my jaw hit the floor. I had no idea she was Australian. Uh, and then there was, um, uh, oh, what's her name? from um, Home Delivery on Channel 2. Uh, they interview um, uh, Australian celebrities and drive around and they go back to their hometown and, and their houses where they grew up and stuff. And they her, one episode was on her. So just uh, listening to her talking and her growing up and what she did, amazing woman and great actress. And I was really chuffed to see that she was in this. So her character is really cool in this. Uh, and... Um, yeah, um, uh, yeah, definitely. You'll you're in, you'll like her in this one, and then you've got the Vampire King. So the main character out of the Vampire, played by Cullen Mulvey. Now he's the young. He was kind of the heartthrob from Heartbreak High, the TV show, when it came out. Uh, and then he kind of played more sinister roles in this, because this dude's resting. I'm gonna fucking smash your head in face. Is <laughs> is amazing. This guy's, it's the most intense stare ever. And it, it's, 
I love him as a character, and he's a phenomenal actor. Uh, in this one, he uh, he plays the king vampire, uh, so he rocks up uh, in Cooper Pedy, and um, you see the Opal City sign in the back, and in the TV show for the opening title where it says Fire Bite, you see that sign, but it says Fire Bite instead of Opal City, so I thought that was really well done. Um, and yeah, you just see him turn up on the bus and uh, at night time he just gets off the bus and starts walking around because he knows where he wants to go and and knows that his vampire colony is underneath the underneath the um, uh, in the mine shaft, so that's where he heads off to. You'd know him from, like I said, Heartbreak High, but he's also done appearances in Batman Super, uh, versus Superman, um, The Outlaw King. Uh, 300, the second 300, and Captain America, and he was also on Mystery Road uh, as well. So there's a running theme here where Warwick is, because he's um, done a lot of work with uh, Mystery Road, you, like I've said in many other episodes too, you can see where the directors built that relationship with those actors and actresses, uh, and it plays off because the, um, the performances that they give for the director is really fucking on point. And, um, yeah, it's just a good combo. Like, you know, it's like a good work team. You know, if you work well together, you know, you get the job done. Everyone works well. Everyone knows their part. And it just runs smoothly like this. And and this, and that's why this TV show runs smoothly as well. And the performances are good by everybody all around. So the general gist of this, uh, the TV show, like I said, it's eight episodes. There's season two coming out shortly. Uh, we follow mainly Shanika and Tyson, her guardian. Um, her main goal is to not only kill the vampires, but to um, find her mum. Her mum was taken from her, like when she was a kid, uh, by the vampires. And so her main mission growing up was to always hunt vampires. She's struggling at school because of this. Um, this kid's black baseball cap is like super glued to her head. Like I've never seen her take it off in eight episodes. Even when she sleeps, she has it on. That's impressive. Like I'm a massive klutz, and I've I've had ba I love my baseball caps. And I tell you, I just it, it doesn't stay on my head long. Like I either knock it off, you know, involuntarily because I'm doing something unco. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was impressed that she managed to keep this hat on for so long. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. The the vampires uh, have basically, like I said, made a colony underneath um, the thing. Their basic plan is that when the Vampire King rocks up, they kind of form this army. They're going to basically take over Cooper Pedy, like, um, and then move on from there. Uh, and so it's a bit of a slow go because this, they're picking off people one by one, mainly FIFO workers. So what I mean by that is fly-in, fly-out miners. And so a lot of the vampires that you're seeing running around uh, FIFO wearing the, the miner outfits, um, and they're pretty much easy to knock off because no one can trace them kind of thing. And Well, they're traceable, but, you know, it's... The people, everyone's kind of going. Well, you know, he could have fallen down a mine shaft, which is which is kind of seems to be the 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 Cooper Pedy thing. And um, uh, even one of the a lot of the characters say, you know, be careful, look down. Like when when the, the girl walks off somewhere or whatever, the elder turns around and says, you know, you be careful now and just always look down. So it's while you're walking, you look because there's fucking holes everywhere. Like and. And like I said, I haven't been for Cooper Pedy, but I've heard from other people who are from Cooper Pedy or have gone there. There is fucking holes everywhere, and you got to look really careful because there's mine shafts all over the place. So pretty much an easy place where you can shove someone in there and they'll never be found again. So that's kind of what the vampires are counting on in this one here. So it's a pretty ingenious place to set up, like uh, a vampire colony, if you don't want to... Uh, where you can just go about doing your business and no one's really going to go too nuts trying to find somebody because they can't. Um, so then it also looks at the local Indigenous community as well and how they've had to live with this um, issue of vampires since colonisation. And uh, so you got the, the story told by Shanika in this really great, 
uh, way about talking about well, she stands up in front of class and talks about Australia Day and she goes to you it's Australia Day to me it's Invasion Day and so she talks about and there's this illustration that plays out while she's talking about how the uh, First Fleet arrive um, and explains how the vampires are introduced I'm not going to go into depth in that because I don't want to spoil it that is so well done uh, I've left everything out I'm not going to spoil a single thing about that you are just going to love how she says it it's just so and it's delivered really well um, like I said this this girl's an amazing actress she's going to go far like she's she's really really good um, so yeah it's episode 5 where you get the info dump so if this was the hour and a half movie this is the hour point I reckon or the 40 minute point where you get the massive info dump and you'll find out everything right into the reason why firebite the word exists so it's it's really yeah it's just genius how they've done it it's it's really really good you'll you'll dig it um highly recommended so all up the thing that i liked about this was basically the cinematography was really good uh the fight scenes were really great there was these genius style fights that i'm not going to get into how they did it but when you watch it you'll you'll really dig it and it, it's to the movie it's to the music uh the thing that's really impressive about this is that um warwick has deliberately gone out and picked no name local artists uh to put their songs and their band into the credits of this TV show to get exposed more. Um, and some of the fight scenes are choreographed to these songs and they're just so well done. And man, it's 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 nothing like I've seen for quite some time. So it's, it's really, really impressive in that sense. So absolutely a definite recommend, nine out of 10, first time horror film, absolutely. Uh, go out check it out for sure uh and cargo so i'm going to move on to horrible mentions now so basically cargo 2017 um is follows a desperate situation where the partner the guy's partner is dead in the car they've got an infant uh he's strapped the infant to his body and he is now he unfortunately has been bitten by a, a zombie and he's got like 24 hours to get this baby somewhere safer uh, while he's the thing. And it is, I, I watched this pre, uh, like my daughter being born and I was already feeling tense about it because it was, the, the kid was in peril. And so I really, as I've said before, I kind of, I don't really like, kids in peril in horror films or and pets uh like really getting killed and stuff i'm a bit squeamish with that so this this ever pending doom about like what's going to happen to this kid like in the back of your mind you go look they're not going to fucking kill the kid but it's it's that oh shit you know there's a lot of these moments where the kid was really in peril and and the guy was really desperate to get out of the situation and and it, it made for a very intense, fantastic, and well-made zombie film from Adelaide. Uh, that's that's the other thing that I thought was really great uh, about that. So definite recommend for that. Later on, at some stage in a few other episodes, I will cover Cargo. Um, but uh, and just for now, it's just a horrible mention off the back of... Um, the uh, tv show so yeah definitely check both of them out um again this is a uh indigenous themed uh horror film episode uh so it's really great to see the local talent that's coming out uh of this and like i said a lot of these actors and actresses are just going to go far and they're, and they're getting picked up they're showing up a lot on abc uh tv shows and dramas coming out so yeah absolutely watch this space uh, but yeah, look, hopefully this does come out in the DVD kind of box set or sit show, but I'm not really holding my breath today how things are with with things. So more than likely you're going to have to check it out on streaming or if you've got someone that can burn it or get a copy of it, you know, good luck, good on you. Uh, definitely check it out 
and uh, yeah, you won't be disappointed. You'll like it. It's it's a great, um, clever vampire indigenous story. So excellent. Cool. That's all for me uh, today. So it's. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Nice, short, sweet, and shiny. And uh, I will uh, come back in another month's time with another episode. I've got some other stuff uh, that's occurring as well. So uh, today's episode was a little bit more tighter and sharper than usual, uh, but just because of time constraints. Uh, but at the same time, I did not want to put the show off um and and not come out with an episode so um yes anyway so all good i hope your month has been good i hope your following month's going to be better and uh stay scary and i will see you in the crypt this is adelaide horror podcast with zombie joe Mwah! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>